Hi guys, it's Debbie from What's Mama Cooking For Us. Thank you for joining me today in my kitchen. And we're going to make some Salisbury steaks today. My mom used to make these for us when we were growing up. And they're so delicious. They're so easy, simple, and very fulfilling and good. So let's go over the ingredients. I got a pound of ground beef. I use a 2080, but use whatever ground beef you normally use. Um, I have some mushrooms, onions, butter, flour, breadcrumbs, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, Worcestershire sauce, and some water, because I'm going to make my own little stock with the better than bouillon. If this is a vegetable, but it doesn't matter. You could use the beef or whichever you have, and I'm going to make some stock and then add some extra water. And we're going to make a roux with the butter and flour. It's going to be so simple, so easy. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have about a pound of ground beef. Um, and we're going to put in... Uh, oh, I forgot. We needed an egg too, guys. So I do have an egg. I forgot to tell you guys that. So we're going to put in a teaspoon of garlic powder. A teaspoon of onion powder. Teaspoon of salt. Or a little bit more. I like to go heavy on my salt. And we'll start with a half a teaspoon of pepper. But we'll see. I might need more. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with a whole teaspoon. I like to just go by what I see, and then that's how I know. And then I'm going to go with um, some breadcrumbs, about a quarter cup. We'll start with a quarter cup, but I don't like to use too much breadcrumbs. Yep, that looks perfect. And our egg. So let's see, we got salt, pepper, we got everything in there. Simple and easy. Yeah, let's just give it a mix. I might add some more salt. I think I will add some more salt because I have a feeling I should go with a uh, teaspoon and a half. <laughs> you want your Salisbury steak to have flavor. There's never, um, not gonna say there's never too much uh, seasoning but just don't go overboard and season it up how you normally season it up and then just give it a good mix so that everything is combined and there's no big uh packs of uh seasonings or anything like that let me just make sure we got it all good and i just like to take mine and patty it up into quite big patties because this is like your serving and my mom she would always make them oval so they guess they look like steaks <laughs> so yeah well let me get that um that done just take a little time and form it into the little steak patty and then i'll show you the next step okay you guys for my stock i'm gonna use this better than bouillon i don't know if you guys have ever heard of it but it's just a, a really good base. They have it chicken and you make it up yourself. So I have eight ounces of water to one um, teaspoon of the better than bouillon. And it tells you right on the back how to make up, how to make it up. So just give it a really good stir. And I'm also going to put some Worcestershire sauce, about a tablespoon, just for extra flavor. Let's just give that another mix. And now our broth is ready. And I'm going to add to this another cup of just water, so then that'll be all set. All right, you guys. Normally, I don't know, I'm always telling you guys I pre-prep things. So normally I would put the um, Salisbury steaks in the pan. But since I like to do mine a little bit later, but I am going to show you and prep now, and then that way I'll be all set. So for my mushrooms, I always like to cut the very tip off, because I don't know if you guys know, they get kind of hard at the bottom. So 
So I usually just get rid of that. No big deal. Sometimes they get left in there. I don't think it hurts anything, but yeah. So these are baby Bellas, but you can use whatever mushrooms you choose. And I cut mine like really thick because you know how they uh, break down to nothing. <laughs> is the word I'm looking for. Okay. And I wanted to say, the better than bouillon, if you do get that, you have to store in the refrigerator. And it lasts in there for like ever. And it's really good. Okay, so there's our mushrooms. I don't know, you can just put more or less, whatever you choose. And then I get a nice onion here. Let's see. Yeah. We'll cut it like that. I'm probably going to use two onions because these are kind of small. But normally you just use one large onion. But these are more like small. <laughs> I would, I, once you peel it, I wouldn't even call it a medium. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think Sal Salisbury Steaks comes from years ago, someone, someone's restaurant, they started making these and I think his name was Salisbury, but I'm not sure. Cause you know, sometimes they're just rumors you hear out there, but um, yeah, so that's why they're called Salisbury Steak. Cause it's really just hamburger technically. <laughs> okay. And then I like to cut mine in rings rather thick because you're, they're going to cook for a while. So. Do I need to get that out of there? No. Okay. Oops. It's just a piece of the skin. And if I do have too much onions, like I always tell you, I put them in the fridge for another recipe. Or if you don't have another recipe planned, go ahead and put them in the freezer. They freeze nicely. And yeah, so I don't throw away any vegetables. I freeze my peppers, my onions, celery, my herbs, everything. <laughs> no need to waste them because a lot of people say, oh my God, I'm not going to buy that because I got to waste the whole thing. Stick it in the freezer. Okay, so these look pretty good. I'll break them up a little bit more off the camera. And then what we're going to do is make a roux with about three tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour, and I'll show you that part when we get there. Okay, guys, I'm going to start the patties, and I'm heating up my pan. I just want to tell you guys, if you're looking for the best pan in the world to purchase and to use every day and for every, everything, <laughs> get an enamel cast iron pan. I love this pan. It's perfect. Um, I'm going to put just a little... Uh, olive oil in the pan just so they don't stick too much make sure my pan's good and hot and I didn't tell you guys but I'm gonna serve these over egg noodles so I can't wait to eat they're gonna be so delicious all right it's gonna take a couple minutes <laughs> but in the meantime I got my butter and my flour and I'm gonna mix these two together and that way, that's going to be to make our roux. And sometimes I do it like that. I just mix it right in the bowl. And then I just put it in there. And you don't have to worry about doing it in the pan. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Here's our sizzle. The only bad part about this pan and it's only literally the only thing is it's really heavy so when you're lifting it especially with the lid on or if you're washing it other than that this pan is perfect it washes out clean it goes in your oven and yeah so if you guys are ever looking for a great get an enamel cast iron pan so what I'm going to do I'll show you guys is I'm just going to mix the butter and the flour together like this. Probably should do it in a bigger bowl, but, and just, whoops, <laughs> don't get it in your food. Just mix it like that until it's completely mixed. So 
simple and easy. And I'll be right back when these are ready to flip. I'll time them. All right, it's been exactly four minutes. I just give it a little push in case it did stick. And give it a flip. Look at those. Absolutely beautiful, you guys. Mm-mm-mm. And that flower is not going to hurt because we're putting flour in the dish anyway, so that won't hurt. So they'll probably cook another four minutes, if not more, I'm, or a little less. I'm not sure, more or less. I'll time it again. Let me do that right now. Yeah, so they're going to go again for another four minutes. Um, I, I had to stop it for a second to do the timer, guys, because I couldn't reach it. But, um, yeah, and then they'll probably cook in the gravy for about ten minutes or so. Just until the internal temperature is about 160 if you like to um, measure yours. Um, yeah, and then I was going to say about the salt, guys. There is a lot of salt in the, um, better than bouillon. There's like 700 milligrams or something per teaspoon that we use a teaspoon. So if you want to go easier on the salt, go easier on the salt. And here's the mix I have all made up that we're going to add. And so, yeah, it's moving right along. Okay, you guys, another four minutes, and they look perfect. They smell so good, and you know, it doesn't matter if they get a little crispy on top. That's just good flavor, and they're not done inside. You can tell just how puffy they are. They're not done inside, but we are going to take them out, so it's been eight minutes, and then... We gotta scrape up them bits, but we're gonna put in our mushrooms and onions. We're just gonna let them cook down just for about three or four minutes. And all that flavor down there, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so good. Okay, I'll be back in about three or four minutes. All right, these are looking perfect, and the water from the vegetables helped pick up some of the goodies on the bottom of the pan. And I'm just going to put this big clump in there. <laughs> I don't know. I think sometimes it's just easier. You can prep it up in advance. And then just move it around your pan. And that way you get all the flavors mixed in there. I got my broth all ready. Mm -mm. It smells amazing. I'm just going to give my broth a tiny spoon, um, stir. And we're just going to pour that in there slowly and easy so we can get the pan cleaned really, really good. I want all those amazing flavors. Oh, my God. If you guys could smell this. Let's put the rest of that in. Get all that in there, all that flavor. And then I'm just gonna scrape this pan up a little bit. The noodles are almost ready. They'll probably be ready about the same time the hamburger patties are done. And I'm just gonna give this a little taste and see if I need any more seasonings, like I might add some pepper. But yeah, let me just let this come to a little boil. Alrighty, this has come up to a boil, so I'm just going to give it a taste, see how the seasonings are. Ooh, mmm, perfect. Ooh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so hopefully it's going to thicken up. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to put a little more um, flour or maybe even some cornstarch. So let's put these guys back in there in their little bed for the next 10 minutes. I put the timer on because my noodles said they were gonna take seven to 10 minutes. So these ooh, can go with seven to 10 minutes probably as well. Don't forget to put all that goodies, goodness in there. And yeah, so look at that guys, O-M-G. So yeah, cover them up. And then we're going to put the cover on and let them cook a good 
eight to 10 minutes. All right, and I'll see you when that happens. Be ready. These are looking amazing. It's time to serve. It has been 10 minutes. I did open the top and flip them. I did have this covered the whole time too, guys. If you don't have a cover, just use aluminum foil. And uh, yeah, so let's get them served up. Okay, let's serve this up. Now guys, you can put some butter on your noodles if you want, but there's no need to. The flavor from the gravy is gonna be good. Let me grab a spoon. Oh, here it is. I thought I had one. Mm-mm-mm. Look at this, you guys. Mm-mm-mm. Woo! Nice piece of Italian bread. Let me take my thumbnail and we'll taste it in just a second. You guys ready? You want to take that bite? All right, let's check it out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look at that. Oh. My gosh, it smells so good in here too, guys. Ooh, look at that. Mmm. Get a little noodle. Let's take a bite. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh my gosh. Mmm, so good. Mm-hmm. Wow, I took too big of a bite. <laughs> But look at how amazing this looks, you guys. I hope you give this a try. If you're new, I hope you hit the subscribe and come back for more. And to everyone who watches my videos, comments, and hits the like button, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. And, uh, yeah, give this a try. It's simple. It's easy. And dinner ready. You can even freeze these up raw and put them in your freezer. They'll be all ready for you to make them. Or you can... Freeze these cooked ones or put them in your meal plan and have them, you know, in the in another few days. So, they're delicious. And this gravy is amazing. Look at that gravy. Oh, my God. All right, you guys, I got to go eat. I'm going to uh, give you a close-up, though, real quick. Yeah, because with the overhead camera, you can't really go in there. Look at that. Look at those flavors. Oh my gosh. Look at that. All right, you guys. So be blessed. I'll see you guys on the next one.